2024. gada pirmais ceturksnis ļoti veiksmīgs bijis nacionālajai aviokompānijai Air Baltic. Pirmjos trijos gada mēnešos tā pārvadājusi par 13,2% vairāk pasažieru nekā pirms pandēmijas 2019. gada pirmajā ceturksnī un par 20,3% vairāk nekā attiecīgajā periodā pērni. Par desmito daļu arī audzis veikto lidojumu skaits. Bet kādas ir Air Baltic ieceres par jaunu maršrutu atvēršanu un papildu finansējumu piesaisti? Cik daudz uzmanības tiek veltīts lidojumu drošībai? Arī, tas, ka tā lidojuma ir īrētām lidmašīnām. Un kad gaisa kuļos būs internets? Dažādas jautājumas mēs pārunāsim jau tūdaļ ar Air Baltic prezidentu un izpildirektoru Mārtinu Gausu. Good morning. Good morning. Labrīt. Jā, labrīt. Labrīt. Exactly, in the introduction we mentioned that this year Air Baltic has exceeded the pre-pandemic figures, both in number of flights and passengers as well. So I would like to ask, does this mean, despite the years of COVID and as well complications of the war currently taking place nearby in Ukraine, can we talk about the company's heyday, so to say? Yeah, the company has made its largest uh, and best results in the history in 28 years. So record profit, record revenue. The company is larger than ever. We're the strongest brand in the Baltic states. We are behind the pandemic uh, and we all is positive now. But we still have the war going on and it is impacting Air Baltic more than other airlines because uh, Latvia is still seen as a country close to a war. And for international investors, of course, that's an issue. But still, Air Baltic is doing very good. We also started very strong this year. And we are going for new records and we are growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So still, what uh, remains to be as um, the most uh, significant concerns at the moment? If, if any, I mean, apart from investments that you already mentioned, if we think about the business perspective, are there something more? We have uh, placed a new order to grow to 100 aircraft by the year 2029. That is successful going forward. We are building the largest hangar in the Baltic states here at Riga Airport. We, are we have more than two and a half thousand people employing another 2,000 people the next years. We have more passengers uh, this year than we had ever before in the forecast. And we will go for more revenue. So everything is positive, but the ongoing war is still putting a little bit the break on because people are looking at us as if we would not be as good as we are. Uh, and that is unfortunate. But the, st the brand is so strong that we get a lot of uh, feedback in Europe, in the world, how good this airline is. Yeah, it's an outstanding good airline now, which Latvia owns. It's a very large airline because we have uh, three times the population as passengers and we are flying for other airlines, so we have even more passengers. So the airline has definitely been the, the icon of the Baltic states now as a brand. And it's a very strong asset the Latvian state has. But yes, there is, if you ask me what is negative, the geopolitical impact on the airline industry, and especially here, it's also applying to the uh, Finnair, uh, that is negative. But everything else is very positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned it a couple of times already, but how exactly does the military action in Ukraine and the Middle East changes businesses of Air Baltic? Uh, I believe that one thing maybe is there are no flights to these countries, but I believe there is more and more. Yes, so there's no flights to the east and everything which we fly southeast, like to Dubai, uh, to other states, we have to fly around all this airspace. So longer flights, higher cost for us. Mm -hmm. An airline in Europe does not have, have that. But a, a big issue is, I was in Ukraine three weeks ago in Kiev to discuss flying back uh, to Ukraine to help rebuild. And they are very happy with their Baltic coming because we were a strong brand there. But we cannot plan that in. Yes? You can't plan it because we don't know when it, when it is happening. But our position, if there is a peace one day, will be much stronger because today it's like a wall and we cannot go there. If we come back to investors, few. They see from the outside, from the US, from the west of Europe, they see Latvia and they only see that it's very close to a war. There's no war here, but they see this very close. And investors are looking at it and they don't give the detail. We are sitting in Riga and everything is good, but investors don't see this. And that is where we have a disadvantage whenever we talk about financing, whenever we talk about our future. People are asking us, but you are from Latvia, you are from the Baltics. Is that not negative? But still, Air Baltic is, is despite that, the, the airline has made record results and it's very strong. So we should see the positive. I'm always positive going forward. And I say we will overcome this issue as well as we're growing out of it. Yeah. 
hopefully that will exactly follow. Uh, going into stock market, we have discussed uh, the topic with you as well uh, sometime uh, previously, but uh, how far the practice is from theory now? So we what steps have been done already? So we are in the phase now where we are preparing to list Air Baltic at the local stock exchange at Riga Nasdaq. This will very likely be the largest IPO, like going to the stock exchange in the Baltic states. And we will very likely be the, the, f the flagship going, the largest brand in the Baltic states, the strongest company. Uh, and we want to make this a big success here. Then other, air, other companies in the Baltic states should follow. Uh, but as everybody knows us in the Baltic states, as the brand is internationally very strong, uh, we should be having a good IPO. Again, investors have to decide. But if you ask how many people know us in the Baltic states, I think the average is about 98%. So everybody knows their Baltic. And with that, we are preparing for it. In the preparation, um, we will have to announce when we s decided to do it. And the first opportunity is the second half of this year. Um, that would be the first time when we could go to the stock exchange. Second part of this year. Uh, still, on the other hand, it should be clear soon, uh, as I understand, in April, how to refinance the bonds that uh, will expire in summer. And there's also a plan to attract additional finance uh, in uh, amount of 100 million euros. So how exactly uh, will this be done? We are in the process of refinancing the bond, and that includes also the future growth investment. The IPO would come after that, and I can't talk about the details of this as it is in the, regulated by the financial markets. But we are working first on refinancing the bond, and then we will be, after that is done successful, then we will be announcing the IPO. But what will be the way, ways of uh, attracting finance about these 100 million if we talk, for instance? That, that we are doing every day by talking to investors worldwide to see what are the appetite for Air Baltic at the moment. And when I come back and say there is always the statement about the geopolitics, then is some of the answers we get. On the other hand, we have very strong results also this year. We are in these discussions and we will announce once we have something, uh, we will not speculate what is happening. Okay. <laughs> if we talk about the safety of airplanes, uh, the incident with the opening of the oxygen masks on the flight from Helsinki to Riga was uh, recently highlighted. Uh, has there been any clarification from the aircraft manufacturer on this? So what happened was when the aircraft was go flying from Helsinki to Riga at about 2000 meters, which is like a, a higher mountain, the masks fell out. It was a system failure, it's a protection, uh, and uh, the, the system thought it is uh, having a problem, but there was no problem, so the masks are coming out, which is good. Um, nothing happened, the flight continued, we reported this, uh, we have the certain ways to report it, and now they are investigating it. But this, it happened uh, now the first time, and it's nothing which happens again and again. It was a small system mistake, but for the passengers, of course, when they see the masks mm -hmm. coming out, but normally when, when these things happen, then the passengers are, um, so there's no, no hectic on board because the aircraft was already very low and, and nothing would happen if, you, if, mm -hmm. if that. But it was a t system issue. We do more than 70,000 flights this year and uh, small issues happen, but it's reported and we have not received feedback yet. You mentioned the fleet, uh, so the aim for 2029, 140, yeah? The, the uh, 100 aircraft by 2020. 100, uh, 100 aircraft. So how many do we have now in the fleet? We have 47 today. 47. And we will get uh, another three this year. And then we continue to add aircraft by 2029. Still, what is the reason why and how many these chartered or how we call it, rented uh, airplanes are used as well in, in uh, Baltic flights? We have two only this year flying for us. So it's completely different. The situation has changed. And the reason is still that engines are missing. So that's a global issue. And also we are still missing engines. Uh, this year, not so many. So we fly this year only with two other aircraft. Uh, and uh, the reason is that there are still engines missing. I think this will go into the year 2026. S over the winter, we were not missing any, any engines. Now we are missing some for the summer. Uh, but this is now uh, not anymore an issue because it's, it's ver uh, after the last years when we did this to a larger extent, now it's two aircraft flying for us and it's a very smooth operation. So we see, we'll see less of them this year. Yeah, I, I think you only see Air Baltic because we have grown and uh, if I, I landed last night and all you see at Riga Airport is Air Baltic.
If we talk about the close future, I hope, uh, how many and what novelties in terms of flights or destinations await passengers this year? Actually, I can make an exclusive announcement, announcement here. We will have uh, pop-up flights. We did that already with Ostrava, where we go to special events. And uh, today we will uh, release flights to Lepaya for only for the months of July and August to attract international visitors to come, Riga Lepaya flights two times a week uh, as pop-up flights because we have two large events happening in Latvia, in Lepaya, the World Rally Championship and the Summer Sound Festival. And what we do as Air Baltic, we take the opportunity, put these uh, flights into the system. After I leave the studio, the, the flights will be go on sale uh, and we hope to attract international uh, passengers to come via Riga and fly to Lepaya because that's a very good opportunity we do this just for July and August, two times a week, and we will do more of this uh, while we, of course, announce a lot of regular routes also throughout the year. And finally, when will the Internet be available in the flights, as we have already reported about this uh, Starlink cooperation? So when this comes into action? <laughs> we did a successful test uh, here at Riga together with SpaceX, with the company providing it, and we continue testing. There's a lot of testing to be done before passengers will enjoy it. The target is that by the end of this year, we will we'll start putting it on, and then it should be within three to six months on all aircraft. But target today is by the end of this year, it should be available. Free high-speed internet for every passenger on board. As a but bonus for everyone or yeah. as a paid extra? Yeah. No, you walk on board and the internet is there. You don't have to log in. It's just there. This will be very new uh, and it will be a big advantage to fly on Air Baltic in the future. Right. And uh, maybe a couple of words about Delta Airlines. Uh, so this corporation has been founded in... Uh, last fall, as I remember. Uh, anything uh, really has stimulated the passengers going over Atlantic because of this cooperation? Yeah, it's, it's a very successful step for our Baltic. You can imagine the whole of America, every, every airport where Delta Airline departs, you can buy a ticket, fly to 20 uh, places in Europe, 20 routes we have, and from there Air Baltic is taking the passenger on the coach chair to the Baltic states. So, of course, for three months now we have this co-chair with Delta Airlines and we can see in the very beginning already what a power comes from America and the exclusivity to have Air Baltic taking the passengers to the Baltic helps us. Uh, all, the, all the record numbers of Air Baltic have been built over the years. So here we are today uh, of what we have built in 28 years. Air Baltic now is 28 years. Latvian state has, through all the time, supported Air Baltic. And here is the success of the largest airline in the Baltic states and the strongest airline and one of the icons of the Baltic states. So Delta Airlines co-chair is just another proof how positive this airline has developed. I'm, I'm very proud that we are here today because we all know we have gone through difficult times mm -hmm. and now we are focusing uh, on the next years where we will grow it even further, but successful.